again, let me start by saying happy 15th wedding anniversary to MC and Kent. May your days be filled with happiness and waffles. The stars of our movie today are Sam Wise, the wedding singer, and Julia Almost Gulia. Please. Our story begins with Henry Roth, marine veterinarian by day, loathsome manhole by night. He's the kind of manhole most reasonable folks try to avoid. There are a few who stay around him, but only because they can't run away. They include Alexa, who ain't got nowhere to go because don't nobody want her, a loyal penguin with two short legs to run away, a pukey walrus with no legs to run away, and this pothead whose brain is too damn slow to know he should run away. So Henry spends most of his days out on the water, forest Gump fronting, and then he stops by a little rest of hut and sees another chance to manhole. But he don't. But the next he sees her again, damsel in distress, trying her damnedest to do up a functional door on her little waffle house. So Henry brings his manhole ingenuity to the scene and saves the day. And then she invites him to park his manly donks opposite her lady donks. And he does. Then they have a romantic discussion about walrus d and then she smells his fingers. And they stink. And then she's like, well, I guess I'ma go. I gotta go pick a pineapple with my dad for his birthday. And Henry believes her. But if a woman told me that, I think it was like saying she had to go to inflate a donut to throw out to somebody drowning in the Pacific. What I'm trying to say is that sounds like bullshit. But it ain't. Which Henry finds out the next day when he sits down with her and starts talking that nasty shit about walrus winky and fish fingies. Which got me like, <laughs> So after she kicks his smooth talking manhole and fish stinking ass to the curb, Sue gives us a flashback. Something about Lucy, her dad, a pineapple, and a cow. Which out of context makes them sound like some mighty kinky fucks. So basically, Lucy's brain got foobarred and she wakes up every day thinking it's the same day as it was yesterday, which was the same day that poor cow survived them mighty kinky fucks. So Lucy goes home to her sweet pappy daddy and sweaty brother Doug and they have the same birthday party they have every single day. And after she go to bed, daddy and Dougie prepare tomorrow for yesterday. So tomorrow Henry tries what he tried yesterday yesterday and he stinks. And tomorrow morrow he tries something new and he stinks. And to tomorrow morrow he tries something else new and he stinks. But it works. But what's the point in asking out a woman who ain't gonna remember you tomorrow because she thinks it's today? I mean, women forget me the next day all the time. But I digress. So, Henry just walks away. And now Lucy is really pissed. Then Dad and Doug are like, could you please let her eat her waffles in peace without trying to serve her your sausage? And of course, Henry is a man ho of his word. So he meets her on the way back from Waikiki Waffle House. And for the next several yesterdays, Henry does his damnedest to get Lucy's attention, even if it means his penguin becoming a dead duck and Lucy beats Ula all the f so Dad and Doug tell Henry to come see Lucy singing and Henry's like, yeah. And what happens when one of these days she wakes up and her ass cheeks dragging the floor and her tits are at her toes? Then the next day, while Henry is making his latest manhole move, the Pope writes Lucy a ticket for an expired plate and all hell breaks loose. So they take her to her doctor who done explained this to her yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Then Henry's like, you know what would be best for her? If she cried every day, first thing in the morning. Salty waffles. So the next day, Henry gives her a videotape to break it all down for her. He also reenacts how he stalks her on the daily with a cocoa titted Ula as her stunt double. And Henry and Lucy go out a whole bunch, then he introduces her to his walrus. And by his walrus, I mean his f***ing walrus. The next morning, Lucy wakes up and don't remember hitting it, so she hits it. Lucy's doctor checks on Henry and makes fun of his egghead, which sends Doug into a roaring rage. And then Lucy overhears Henry saying he once had a life that he's put on hold for her. So in an excessively schmaltzy scene that got me like, <laughs> she tells Henry to get, then Henry gets, but not before Dad and Doug arrive bearing gifts, including a Beach Boys CD which plays for Henry the song that Lucy sang on all those yesterdays when she re-met Henry, which I forgot to mention, so bite me. Like that shark do when you touch his winkies. Two winkies. What I'm trying to say is Henry goes back and finds Lucy working at the hospital, and even though she don't know Henry's name, she's been dreaming about and painting pictures of him. Oh, that's so... <laughs> Well, at least I'm not better. And Ula performs a ceremony, minus his cocoa titties, while offering up some TMI about how sex with his wife got him like, <laughs> Then Lucy wakes up to tomorrow, tomorrow, yesterday, plays the tape, opens the curtains, sees God's beautiful work, and goes out onto the deck where she greets her whole fam damnly, plus a child she don't remember birthing, minus Doug because he fell overboard and sunk to the bottom of the ocean under the weight of his oversized roided man buns. I'm assuming. Duh in. Once again, MC and Ken, I hope you muffins have a lovely life with happiness and waffles. Hold the salt. You may not believe this based on some of the things I've said in it, but I love this movie. I actually quote it often in daily life, which is probably why all the women run away. Four movies explained for... I'm Jeb. This my good eye. Dive.